Hi, today we're going to talk about uh, why you should start mortgage shopping now because the spring home buying season is just right around the corner. So most home buyers don't shop for mortgages until they've started going to open houses, you know, looking at houses, dreaming about which ones they, they want to be in. But And actually, some people actually don't even do their mortgage shopping until they're ready to put their offer in. Don't do that. <laughs> don't be that person. <laughs> Please. So today we're going to talk about the reasons why you should start mortgage shopping now if you're even thinking about doing some home buying in the next few weeks or even months, this upcoming spring and summer season. So Janice, why don't you take us away? Okay. First of all, I'm so happy it's spring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I was about done with this winter. Yeah. So it's really nice. You know, Everyone's going to be getting out. You're going to go open houses. The, pl the plants are coming up. So what to do now? Number one, fix your credit. Right. It's a great time to look at that. We have talked about this before. You can go uh, once a year online to pull your credit report. And it's a really good idea to take a look at this because things uh, things happen that you may not realize that, uh, oh, I really did pay that bill, but they just didn't uh, record it. And you can fix that. It's a good time to take a look at it and uh, do some credit fixing, per se. Just take a look. It's a good time. Think about some, some other examples of how you, you should take a look at these things. Um, let's see. The example I've given before is that uh, it's so easy to spot a problem like a missed payment to, to Home Depot or your Amex. And, and if it's a mistake, if you actually did make that payment on time, it's just a few phone calls to the 800 number to make that fix. But that fix can, can, and it takes, it can, can increase your credit score by 20, 30, 40 points. So you want to do this in advance because it does take a few weeks for that change to reflect in your credit score. You don't want this to come up the night before you're trying to submit your offer right. or, get, or get your rate. Yeah, <laughs> Right. Absolutely. And if that one mistake means a difference between you getting the house and not getting the house, yep. you want to take the time now to fix it if yeah. it's fixable um, and then you're ready to go. Yeah, it, could mean, it could mean the difference between you know 4.5% or 4.75%. Yes. And I'm not going to tr pretend that I know the math on that, but that could be thousands or tens of thousands of dollars over the course of your mortgage, right? Right. Absolutely. And we know better than to ask me math. We've learned this on previous podcast <laughs> that we don't do that. <laughs> was just, no I, was just, I was just bragging on the last episode that I went to this math and, math and science school. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. And, and here I am. Yeah. We're not going to go there. But anyway, <laughs> number two, speaking of money, set a real budget. This is important because uh, what what is in a real budget? So we we again, we've talked about this. You've talked about this in your book. When you have a mortgage payment and you look on your and you're like, oh, that's so great. I'll pay $1,000 a month. But what is a real budget? That mm -hmm. is more than just your mortgage payment, correct? Yep. Uh, there's a lot of other things, you know, to look at. You've got, uh, what do you call them? The, in the co-ops, you have your monthly fees. And then mm -hmm. you have uh, taxes. You've got your escrow. There is so much more to put in there. So, But start and set a real budget. And then look at how much is the bank really willing to lend you <laughs> yeah. talk? You need to talk to a financial advisor with your specific documents and say, okay, what are you thinking? Yeah. Don't rely on rules of thumb or online calculators or what your neighbors are telling you to do. I mean, those are good, I guess, starting points of, to start your thinking, but you don't know what you qualify for until the bank tells you. <laughs> until the bank tells you. And then, <laughs> and then, you yeah. And then one step further, you don't know what you're comfortable paying until you at least test out that budget, see how those numbers feel. Right. And I like your your theory, you've said mm -hmm. this as well, is that test it. Yeah. So if you know, I'll send and done, we'll use a nice easy number like $2,000. So yeah. You know $2,000 is what it's going to be to be in that house. Test it for a few months. Live that way now and see if you can do it. And so make it real, make it comfortable. And then once you know this real budget, the, the budget that feels right to you, you can stop looking at houses that you can't afford that are just going to make you drool and Correct. make you unhappy with, with the rest of your life. <laughs> Correct. When you look through it, you're like, oh, it's so wonderful, but I can't afford it. Well, if you would have known in the first place you can't afford it, you probably shouldn't have gone in, you yeah. know, to look and get all dreary, <laughs> what is it, dreamy eyed looking mm -hmm. at these uh -huh. houses that are way out of your budget. Yep. I mean, which we're all guilty at. I don't know about you, but I like HGTV and I'm like, oh, it's only a five, you know, $600,000 home and it could be a second home, but it just doesn't work that way. So yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, I cover a bunch of this stuff in my book, How to Buy Your Perfect First Home, available on Amazon. And yeah, the first, I don't know, two or three chapters cover a lot of this really great stuff. 
So check it out. I totally agree. It's a really great, like I call it the one-stop shopping. If you're going to start this process, just read it and it gives you good tools. And it's and it's a quick, easy read of cool. here's what you should do to get you started. Um, cool. I, I definitely think it's a good, important read. Um, number three, move your money. Mm. Uh, so maybe you could talk about this a little bit more because you, you've said this, you know, again in the book. Yep. Um, what do you mean? What's the best way to do that, the best time to do that, and All how right. to do it? So bottom line is both your seller and the bank are want to see proof of funds. If you're telling everyone, oh, I have, I'm, I'm ready to put down 20%, right? Which let's say in our example is $50,000. Okay, show me the $50,000. <laughs> Correct. Um, I mean, you, you may, maybe you're not aware of this, but you have to show statements that reflect that the money's there. Couple things you need to know. It's not just one statement. You have to show that that money has been sitting there for two or three months. That's why at you need least. to move. At least. At yeah. least. That's why you need to move the money well in advance. You can't have. Uh, um, you, you can't move it at the last minute. Number one, and it's super annoying for both the lender and the seller if your fifty thousand dollars is in ten different accounts, seven thousand here, three thousand here, two thousand in in E Trade. You know, that's just going to slow things down. So. If you're thinking you're ready to, to move and, and start the home buying process, consult step one, consolidate and put it in one account, maybe an online savings account like um, I think Barclays and American Express, Express both have very reasonable, I think almost yes. 2% um, yeah. interest rates. Yeah, just throw them in there. The transfer process is pretty easy. It takes a couple of days after you do that deposit verification stuff. Um, and then you'll have one statement that you just rip out or you know Here print out is. the PDF, send it to seller, right. send it to bank. And you can send them the past three statements. Look, it's been the whole time. No movement. Steady Eddie. It's been in there the whole time. There's my proof of funds. Um, do this in advance because if, you, if you're if you sending everyone 12 different statements. Gets frustrating. It's, it's a, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a potential right. monkey wrench in, in what, in your, you know, on, on the path to your dream house. So Exactly. And, yeah. and sellers love this when the buyer is prepared. Yep. For example, I yeah. had said this, uh, a dear friend of mine put her house on the market, yeah. 9 a.m., 5 p.m. They had an offer. It was solid. They were ready. And they said, we'll take it. Wow. Okay, great. Right? I mean, does that happen anymore? Fast forward three days. Uh, they didn't have their proof of funds in order. So the parents didn't give them the 10 grand they were going to get. And it fell through. So they had only had the, the house on the market for a day. They took it off the market. And got, you know, think of how much time that they lost because they were waiting. on. Well, so it's just so important. Sorry, I'm just going to throw in one criticism yeah. of that on that story. Please. I mean, the realtor should have told them not to get excited till they saw the proof of funds. Exactly. You're but right? they, yeah. apparently everything was there. But okay. then the, the mother-in-law or something said, no, we're not going to give you that 10000 But still, have yeah. it all. Do this way in advance. Yep. You know, this it's not the time to do it when you place this amazing offer yep. the day it goes for sale. and. <laughs> Sellers don't like that, especially if you come back around. Could you imagine if they came back and they said, okay, now we really have it. We want in. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's not happening. Um, so number four would be taxes and W-2s. Oh, it's tax season. That's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> oh, you have so many uplifting tax information this year that everyone should listen to. But anyway, um, <laughs> but you have to show your proof of income. You, you, I mean, I don't know what else to say about this. You have to do your taxes. There's really no way around that. And you need to keep them on file because you're going to have to show a few years that you've had this income. You know, great. You've got a new job. You make a lot of money. But for the last three years, you've been, you know, working at McDonald's. Not that that's bad, but, you know, no you've got else. to show you can afford that. New so th think of this as, this, as the, the, the corollary to proof of funds with the bank accounts. You might have to prove income on, on a similar, in a similar way. And two ways of doing that. If you are if you work for somebody, if you work at a company, is through your employer, through W twos or through the, your HR department. If you're self employed, or if you have I don't know rental income or investments that are that make up a big part of your income, then you need your your tax returns and your CPA ready to sign certain letters or statements to to sort of um, to validate that this is your income. Right. So this is important because if you're looking to buy a house or to put in an offer, let's say in April. And you're self-employed, right? You following me so far? I am. So you yeah. know that you're going to need a letter from your CPA. Are CPAs busy in April? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with maybe <laughs> just a little bit. Um, so that's an example of where you would want that sorted out sort of in advance, right? Correct. And correct. then another example from the company side, because I know a lot of folks just work for banks, co corporations, what have you. 
let's say I'm just I'm just kind of making stuff up now. Let's say you're going to need a, a letter a proof of, a letter of proof of employment from your HR, as in addition to your most recent W twos, which is sort of standard uh, proof of income. But you know that the HR person at your office has a big belly. I'm, I'm, I'm not, ah, <laughs> and might be yes. going on maternity soon. Or something Correct. like I'm just, I'm just coming up with an example. No, but you're right. Yeah, there right. Could be circ- geez, even a trip for a few weeks could right. throw a wrench. Right, a vacation, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So get that stuff sorted out. Don't wait till the last day and like, hey, where's Carla from HR? Oh, don't you know she's on her honeymoon? Ah, how <laughs> am I going to get honeymoon. my proof of income? You know, <laughs> she had a baby. She'll be back in three months. I mean, that will definitely throw a wrench right. into so things. Just some examples of why you need to do this in advance. Yeah. Yes. Number five, last one, so important, get pre-approved. I mean, with everything we said today, get your pre-approval. Talk to a bank. Have that piece of paper. You're going to be – so we've said this before. You go in with your offer. Someone comes in with the exact same offer. One is pre-approved. One's ready to go. One has all their finances in order. Guess which one's going to get that house. I mean, the one who's got all their ducks in a row. So we're we're in the situation now, Janice. It's a little different. Uh, We're sellers. We're selling an estate property. Yes. And um, one, there's a lady who's interested in buying and she's put in her offer, but she's explicitly said, I am not pre-approved and I don't have proof of funds. Right. Um, so, okay. Thank you for your offer. Thank um, you. We'll put it right here at the bottom of the pile. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to be mean, but seriously. No, I mean. it, it's not. But yeah. you can't buy anything yeah. without knowing your finances are ready. So it's really great if I want to offer you a million dollars. Yep. I could offer that until I'm blue in the face and you could say, that's great. But yeah. if I can't really show anything that says I could afford a million dollar home, you're just talking. it's not really worth yeah. anything. I'm just talking. Yep. That's all I'm doing. I'm talking. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So my question for you is to yes. bring this out. You said um, in the beginning, this is, you know, but spring we're, we're starting to, to do this yeah. realistically. Yep. Someone wants to look at this time now. Do you think there's enough time to do all this if they start now? Yes. Um, and really, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so it's still doable for the springtime if they just start now. Absolutely. Um, okay. You just the point isn't that you need you know the point isn't that you, isn't that you need three to six months of a, of advanced lead time. That would be great, but it's more the point is don't wait until you're putting an offer in. Don't wait till you've already seen the house, you fall <laughs> yeah. in love, and right. You can do a lot of this stuff concurrently. You can be working with your mortgage broker or your bank. You should actually work directly with your bank. You could be working with your bank to sort out you, what your pre-approval is, while you and your husband or your, you know, your, your whoever are browsing listings. You, it can right. be concurrent, and then maybe once you have a sense of what your range of budget should be, uh, then you start actually walking into houses. I mean, it can all. It's 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 not necessarily one, two, three, tick tock, tick. It can be no, it can be concurrent. No. Yeah, but it's a great idea, like you said. If you are even thinking about it now, or fall or winter. It doesn't hurt to start early and be prepared. Very good. And actually, you actually don't want to be too far in advance because some things do go stale, meaning if you get a letter from your CPA last year or your HR, I mean, it does need to be somewhat contemporaneous with when you're putting in your offer. So just try to find that balancing. I think anything within the past six months is, is good, three months okay. better. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So that's all I have. Remember, check out the book, How to Buy Your Perfect First Home, available on Amazon. Otherwise, thank you, Janice, and thank you, listeners. Talk to you next time. Talk soon. Bye.